Thank you for attending the fifth annual Herring Fest here on Hornby Island. Uh, I just want to start by acknowledging we're in the First Nations territory of the Coast Salish people, and specifically the unceded territory of the Comox Nation, uh, where Hornby and Denman are. Um, this is the fifth annual Herring Fest, and the first virtual one, of course, and the one last year was in early March, just before the province started to shut down. So the pros of doing it, uh, a virtual Herring Fest, are that we can reach out on the World Wide Web to many, many more people. The, the uh, cons of it are how much, how difficult it is to try to do it, um, bringing all these people together. We have an amazing list of, of people and the videography and the people behind putting all this together are truly remarkable. So I want to start by thanking all the people that have helped put Herring Fest together. Uh, they all knew who they are, the Conservancy Hornby Island Board, the, the person behind the camera right now, the person standing to the right of me who's got a sound boom over my head, Rochelle Chinnery, all these people have contributed to this, this now fifth, fifth event. So um, Herring Fest is basically a celebration of an, am an amazing event that happens every year around our island. The herring come from the outside um, in the open Pacific where they feed. They come all the way around the southern end of Vancouver Island. They come back right here to spawn. They're a forage fish. Uh, they're about eight, eight to 10 inches long. They feed a huge variety of species in, in the marine web. They feed sea lions, seals, seabirds, whales, and of course, the herring fleet that comes to catch these, these fish every year as well. So Herring Fest is predominantly a, a celebration of the amazing event that happens around Hornby Island every year. And it has four main components. First is the emotional and the wonderment of what goes on around our island. The second is to educate and learn. And we have an amazing group of speakers lined up. We have Chiefs Eric Pelkey and, and Ernest Alford. We have Dr. Brian E. Pan, who's been working with First Nations and as a teacher at the University of Victoria. We have Drs. David Suzuki and Alexander Morton, who have been our, probably Canada's preeminent marine scientists that have been working on, on, on these issues all, all their lives. We have Drs. John Nielsen and, and Bob Brangley, who are going to be speaking about the science behind this amazing fish. And we have Dr. Dana Leposky, who's a, a professor at, at uh, Simon Fraser University, and we'll be talking about uh, the archaeology and what she's found in the history of First Nations uses. And the third thing is to entertain. And we have Casey and Finnegan, who are two puppets, who are going to be uh, going out on a boat trip. And, and they've got masks they're wearing so that they'll uh, be living up to uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry's rules around COVID. And they're going to have life jackets on while they're on the boat. And they're going to be going out uh, to entertain you, to show you at a, a five-year-old level, just the amazing event that goes on around our island. And the, the fifth, the fourth thing we're gonna do, we're gonna have a virtual boat trip, because one of the key elements of Herring Fest is every year we take a dozen people out at a time on, on a 40-foot, 42-foot X fish boat to go out to see and feel and smell all the amazing creatures that are out there in this part of this, this event. One of the things you'll be totally stunned by is the actual smell of what's going on out there. Now, we can't duplicate that virtually, which is kind of too bad, but the rest of it, you'll be able to see, you'll be entertained, and we hope you, you really enjoy this event. So with that, I'm going to turn this um, the introduction of this over to Rochelle Chinnery and the people of the Hornby Island Arts Council who have uh, brought all these amazing artists together for this event. Thank you. Thanks, Grant. We're really happy and um, proud to be working with the um, Conservancy Hornby Island again this year. We have an art show every year with Herring Fest um, that shows the work of all the, all the artists on Hornby Island. We invite people from um, Vancouver and Victoria. Um, everybody participates in this art show. This year, um, because of COVID, uh, we're going to be having uh, a virtual art show and it'll be like going into a video game where you walk into the hall and you walk around um, through your screen. There's Raven. 
Uh, and so it'll be a, a bit of a different experience, but um, every year the, um, the artists on Hornby take the time to just express um, what it means to them to, um, to have this herring spawn um, here on the island. It's, um, it's something, it's a very emotional time for a lot of people. We, we consider it a kind of um, rebirth after the winter. And um, people are so excited to participate in the art show just every year. So this year we have um, performances. So our first performer is John McLaughlin, followed by Minno de Vost, and finally a performance by Tony Wilson and Bill Smith who will be reading a poem by Carol Chambers. So it is a celebration, and we, uh, we invite you to participate all through the weekend. And uh, we'll be posting up information about how to visit the show, the art show, and also how to participate in the symposium. So happy Herring Fest. From long before your time, from long before your day, I've roamed the oceans wide, not knowing where I'm bound, but knowing where to go. I return to this place in the shallows and the weeds, in the seething silky seas, a whole universe explodes. New life it is spun. New life makes its way In spring I scatter like the rain Off across this ball Rolling with the tide In my watery world I range Predators and prey Survival in the sway But the worst is upon my return I am the herring But something is wrong my days are numbered, I've not got long Listen to my call, listen to my song I am the herring, help me for I'm gone Your ships appear at night, your ships appear with lights Nets are cast, there's no escape Swept up the mile Taken for the pay, it all happens without shame. When daylight appears, I am nowhere near. Gone, only memory in my way. I am the herring, but something's gone wrong. My days are numbered, I've not got long. Listen to my call, listen to my song I am the herring, help me for I'm gone You may say you know, you may say it's fine But there are things you don't see I am but a link in a chain that spans all time. I wish you'd listen to my plea. Stop this wanton lust. The boom has gone to bust. Your life is tied to me. I am the herring, but something's gone wrong. My days are numbered. I've not got long. Listen to Call, listen to my song. I am the herring, help me for I'm gone. I am the herring, help me for I'm I am the herring, help me for I'm Hello, supporters of local oceans and herring and salmon and all the life that lives here. Um, 
I wanted to just talk about this piece uh, that I'm about to play. Um, it's called The Beginning. And um, when I was asked to be a part of this event, um, I immediately said yes, because I love the event itself. And I grew up here on Hornby Island and have a, a lifelong connection with um, the herring season has always been hugely impactful for me as a kid and then impactful in different ways as I've as I've grown up and as that industry has changed and the environmental implications of it have changed as well. So I was very excited to be a part of it. Um, however, I am uh, not really a topical songwriter. And so I was immediately kind of faced with a, what, what am I going to do here? What am I going to present? And I remembered that I had written this song a number of years ago and um, I had been living in Vancouver and um, it was on the tail end of, uh, of the, the massive destructive hurricane that had hit Haiti. And so I was thinking about that and, and thinking about the sort of very destructive and palpable change in climate. And I was also thinking a lot about um, uh, referencing the book, The Cloud Atlas. So this will be a spoiler if you haven't read it. Um, but basically, that book goes chronologically through time and looks at this place in the future that is the worst possible outcome for where we are headed now. It's, it's horrific. But then what's really interesting is it goes after that. So um, to this place where people are essentially back to the fundamentals of living off the land and having a spiritual as well as a survival basic uh, relationship with their environment and with their surroundings um, and and very little technology um, and and a lot of story a lot of story and mythology and spirituality around that being an integral and very strong part of um, part of their survival in that in that environment so this song is kind of um, I, I was really stuck on that idea which is maybe a little bit of a romanticization of <laughs> the post-apocalypse um, but I think that the 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 thing that I grab onto it is the cyclical nature of life and that life ultimately is um, is a, a miracle and also tenacious and will survive. And so when I think about my environment here on Hornby and the cyclical nature of, of the seasons that happen here and of the different animals that appear in uh, different, different phases of our ecosystems all around, um, I, I think of that, I think of the, um, the destructive nature of the industry, but I also think about the cycles and the tenacity of life um and so and also story and how we connect to, so directly to our environment by story and mythology and spirituality so that's a lot <laughs> it's very heady but um but uh um it it is it is why I thought that this song would be a, a nice one for um, for this event, and uh, I want to say uh, thank you to all the organizers of the Herring Fest and to Hayek, and uh, yeah, thanks for uh, inviting me to be a part of it. Find mesh wire and something. F 
for a pod that can withstand the heat of fire. Peel some bark, gather water, carve a spoon, coax the embers to a slow hot burn, and cook it all down. Stir the pulp around Ladle it thin over the wire And let it dry far from the fire What would we use to make the marks? Coal from the pit won't last long enough for history to wait till the summer turns and squeeze the black from the berries thick enough for the telling pick as many as you can and separate the juice from the flesh store it to keep to stain your mouth your words your story At 9.35 a.m. exactly, March 7th, the first row comes in at high tide and the Gaul's orgy begins. Jostling like legionnaires ten deep at the buffet tables, they gorge and gobble the rich fare until too full to fly. From shore, the eagles watch. So numerous, the great furs look like hat racks in the lobbies of convention halls at a Calvinist convention. They're not glad to see each other. Perched three to a branch, they seem to disapprove the gluttony of their neighbors, but are too heavy with fish to move. The sea lions arrived from the south for their annual spa on Eagle Rock, bask, on the sandstone. In the warm spring rain, no need to fish, merely to browse on the meadows of herring. The pregnant cows have mild, whiskered faces, warm brown eyes, and the teeth of tigers. The fleet waits, an uneven necklace around the island of deep sea boats and flat bottom skiffs moored four and five together, waiting with radios on for the signal from the spotter planes, and droning like bumblebees, and watching the shoals of fish. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they wait, dinghies and skiffs, trundle between the big boats or shoot off at high speed to the pub behind the breakwater for more beer. More beer? They must stay sober through the nervous boredom. No one is buying whiskey yet. Monday morning after daybreak, the fisheries planes finally announce the start for 10 o'clock. Ready? 
Offline maniacs, the clusters break and spread, the big boats make an outer rim, the skiffs loose from their parents stagger themselves, leaving parallel runs so the nets won't cross. A double ring of hundreds. Get set! From north and south, the cash boats come to make a thinner third ring. Raise the red flags and open the hatches to receive the fish. The Japanese agents on board adjust their binoculars and unlock the suitcases of money. Go! The skiffs roar to life, dropping the orange boys to mark the trail to the net, running the rest out in one long sprint, rank on rank in opposite directions, as though beautifully rehearsed. A pause, and then the silver paddles of the beaters start to turn, winding in the nets. The sea is milky turquoise with milk, and the gulls go mad again. A month from now, the eagles and seagulls will have returned to their nesting places. Sea lions will near the Aleutians. A long journey to the summer nursery ending. The fishermen will be drinking beer again. Merchants will weigh out the blonde row in grams like gold. Morsels for the very rich. The herring, having spawned, will have found the deeper, colder water of the Gulf, and the row that survived, clinging to the kelp beds, will hatch in their millions to a new world. There's one. This was brought to you by uh, Hornby Live, which is a program of the Hornby Island Arts Council. We invite you to follow the links to both Herring School and to our virtual art exhibition, which is a fundraiser for Conservancy Hornby Island, CHI. I'd like to give a special shout out to Juniper Slaker for putting together our virtual exhibition. That was, um, that was a, a, a feat in these, these times and also to Hornby Live for uh, bringing us these uh, island musicians. Have a good night.